Yes, my friend. Um, yes, my friend. Welcome to another episode of Last of the Real. You know, as usual, it's me, your host, or the most, Zane. I'm here, my friend, I'm in the group. Who there? Of course, I know it's me. I want to know the answer is nice. You have to give this point and talk the real talk. Right. Don't know me there, Mr. Ryan Anderson. They have to keep it real with them on them up top. Oh. I'm on a JRP day, I know. I'm just ready. They have to give my two cents on things. So, Chavi not there yet. Chavi, Chavi soon forward still, hopefully. So, we have a go on without Chavi, you know. As usual, we want to talk about this week's Premier League matches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This weekend was a hot weekend. So, yeah. you know, the first game we want to start with still, we want to start with Manchester United versus Aston Villa and that shocking defeat. Sir, Brian, you, the Manchester United fan, what went wrong? Why? Because the, the match spoiled my day. But um, from I saw the lineup, I honestly didn't know say, it'll be a tough day. You know, yeah, Man United has a squad that is capable of winning the league. Yeah, that cannot be denied. Right, yeah, that's a, sure. The deficiencies in midfield, but we're going on a midfield. Because who plays there, we have really three, four central midfielders. Right, you cannot play a Pogba in a two man pivot if you now have a because he's a defensive liability, and which is, is, is a nine from my personal perspective. Because for somebody with that stature, stature and, and strength, shouldn't be bullied in midfield, he should be able to tackle. And because he's built in the, in, the, in the ilk of one of my favorite uh, midfielders of all time, the great Patrick Vieira, like yeah, you was Manchester United man, yeah, all that man. That's the type of midfielder I like. One who can defend but also can create and, and go forward. Patrick Vieira was a complete midfielder. Which is why maybe read Abu Dhabi because he was similar to him. You understand? Pogba is like that, but, but for some reason this man can't tackle. And, and I said for somebody so, who's so strong and big, it not look good, man. So we know him can't play there without having a stronger defensive cover to help him out, to allow him to express himself. We have Fred. Oh, yes, Fred not strong enough to help him out. Repeat. Yes, sir. Fred not strong enough to help Pog by the defensive cover. Fred is a disaster waiting to happen. And you know what bought me in a match too? He makes a mistake and, and do a misplaced pass and I laugh. That, that's mm. the thing about him. He make, he, he, I make a mistake and like lift up a man like, yeah, man, sorry, sorry. Man, man come up on my feet with, with, with that man. You can't have, but, him, have the ball in front of the defense because once he get the ball there, um, them start pressure him, him, him make mistakes. I'm not a goal. He, he gave, a, gave away five goals last season. Five. Right? Five goals last season. Bye, bye, no. bye, bye. By pressing him and him, 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 him commit a blunder. Mark Tamine can't tackle. And then Mark Tamine offers nothing much going forward. He's just, he's just a solid player that can play a role. He said he's one of those players where you can give him a job for though and he'll do it well, but there's nothing great to his game. And if, if, if we had Matic at 26, we'd have perfect. But Matic well, is no one. thing now. Matic, mm. Matic all. And me hear the passion in your voice, like you said, the man them spoil the day. Boy, as an Arsenal fan, I know them day spoil in the field. I won't even have Eddie if we go through. But more here with the next man them have to say about the match. Snipe, you watch the game? Quickly though, I also make one, one, one last point. Yeah. It shows that really Ole has reached a point where he has carried Manchester United where they need to go. But to go to the next level there, we'll probably and right, man. And they're right, man. Because the, the constant okay. the, the insisting on playing Fred and McTominay and not utilizing the, the squad to the fullest of potential make really have a question like, why are going up there so? You're not ready for this. So it, it was really frustrating. Yeah, me understand. Me understand. So who else have something to say? Yeah, so I take in the match. 
And I was here thinking that Manu would have easily um, gotten the, the victory and Ronaldo would have turned up and, and maybe scored three goals since he is the man at the moment right now. But it didn't work out um, like that. But you know, funny enough, each time Manchester United lose a match, you hear about this defensive midfield problem. Like, yeah. isn't that team good enough? To go on and and and, and beat uh, Aston Villa, yeah. and yeah, my thing to Jermaine, Let me say this real quick: if you have a defensive midfield problem, right, with firepower like they possess, don't you think they should then be outscoring teams easily? Easily. I mean, right. I mean, Bruno um stepped up in the dire moment. Um, to take a penalty kick and, and pretty much sky that one. I wonder. If, I think that one, that one's still traveling. <laughs> I wonder if because Ronaldo is there and, and the pressure is on him as a as a penalty taker. But disappointing with the with the re- result and Manu should have done better better there. But let me ask you a question now. Is it a thing where they underestimated Aston Villa? Could be because on tape you could have you would have said this would have been an easy one for them. Yeah, that is it. Remember, Travis did call it, you know, and Travis said Villa go finish fourth, you know. So make we see. Make we see. Make, make we see. That was a bold statement by, by Travis, but um well, the, the season finished in May, so still have a lot more games to play. Right. But we're not going to spend the whole time on, on Manchester United. We could travel across the next side of Manchester. We talk about City, the billion dollar team, Manchester City. And play Mr. Snipe's team. Snipe, you watch a match? Uh, hard not to watch a match like that. Um, Why? I, I would start and say, I think uh, for me, this match brought me back to reality because I, I would line for saying that on paper to me Chelsea has one of the better teams to win the mm-hmm. Premier League on paper, paper and yeah. I get somewhere along that line I get caught up into it and watching all the match start and Chelsea with this pressing game basically we have played toe to toe with City and I was pretty impressed but at the end of the day the reality kicked me to never sure so yo this is just something new to Chelsea, so we are a new style of playing that we are trying. While City, this is what they do on a regular basis. And it showed throughout the match, them constantly had you under pressure. But now, the thing is, do not snipe. Even when Chelsea was trying to press City, City was comfortable playing the ball around them. Yeah, man, so that, man, that's exactly the point. Man, Chelsea says, as much as we are pressing a player, try to play their game. When they get the ball, now, it's a not like as, as they realize every player upon Chelsea team, they had two persons marking Chelsea. It's like some wizard thing them man they pull off where on the whole them can't do that. And when they go for offense, them switch immediately. The man they just a different. Every, every man they right now go like a move around and isn't it? Fine no space. man, yeah man. So that no. really. That you really see a man, so when yeah. Start moving them way, that me really say, yo, yeah, we still have a long way to go. We make this paperwork get to me head and feet. Say, yeah, man, if we can really keep this going, but City kind of put me on place today. But there is positivity for me because I say it's just it's a work in progress with a new team, new coach. I still I get there. And, and you have me. one major, one major bright spark, you know, Mendy. Mendy is fantastic for me, you know. Because if it wasn't for Mendy, it could have been six or seven. So, 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 listen, the man in my team class, you can't count him what has been the number one at the goal without question. Because the man, so, so. they got some ball here, so like, how you reach that? So, we're not coming, but, but, see, within, but within the same breath, though, I will say the same thing that we were saying earlier about Manchester United. Despite the loss, Manchester United, with the firepower that they have, them should not strike from before it after they like, get a chance to weird out late them in the idea. Sure, you know, sure. Chelsea never get as much chance, but we get at least two to three good opportunities. I'm not going to say clear chance, but good opportunities. And 
team up, boy, as much as me defend the man, boy. When it comes to in front of the goal, no, 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 no. You remember, me, I ended up that conversation the earlier. But, Jeremy, you have nothing to say about it much? You didn't watch it? Yeah, man. Um, This is our next match that I uh, was totally disappointed. Just like with my new um, match, I had Chelsea winning as well. And, you, you know, with, 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 with City um situation and without a striker and and pep always tweaking things but i think the biggest talking point in this match is lukaku um blanking again i said it in the, in the first episode that the this boy. podcast says that i believe that lukaku will find it difficult against the much bigger side with um with with better defenders and today um it shows again um obviously he will bully the other is up, um, um, smaller teams. Uh, no disrespect to them, but this is one that Chelsea should have wrapped up. But I could move on from Chelsea because you mentioned smaller teams and be able to pull the smaller teams. Brentford versus Liverpool, the newcomers versus the Giants. Now, mm-hmm. that, that was a game and a half. Yeah. Ah, when... Didn't expect that that score line, and uh, that that one was quite quite shocking. Uh, they have the Liverpool up there, the big Van uh, Van Dijk and, and shipping three goal, while Arsenal went down there in their first matter and got two. Um, I guess you can say Brentford is here to stay. Um, they they look a good team. They they press a lot, especially at home. And I'm excited to see uh, a team that just come up in the league um, displaying such confidence against the big boys. So you said Brentford is here to stay? Yeah, man, they're here to stay. Uh, if yeah, if I don't I want to... thing, yeah. Sorry, if I want thing, I would say that, as I said earlier about my thoughts in this world, from paper and gameplay, a two different thing. And this is two one I think. Thing. Thing. Agree, and agree, agree. Premier League or football in general, so excited because so many of us will come with the hopes that uh, Liverpool easy run over, mm-hmm. Manchester United easy run over. No, I mean even even the Arsenal and Tottenham game, I would expect it to be more competitive. I would expect it to be much more closer, probably a one nil or two one, but this was a wash by Arsenal. So on paper, that's one thing, but the game itself will be different story. Which is right. Now, yeah, since we had to on the Arsenal and Tottenham game, I could say this one thing. In your face, anybody right way off, in your face, we're not playing. Arsenal is building and we're in the right direction. That, we trust the process. That, that, was a, that was a good performance by the guy. I expected Tottenham uh, to came out. Um, much stronger, but but nonetheless, um, Ars- Arsenal wanted that that win. We we definitely needed needed that one. There's no way we could we should could have turned up and and lost it. I mean that would have been too um too much pressure on Arteta and the guys. Now that was a that was a statement by Arteta. That was a <laughs> statement. No, talk going back to your earlier fine snipe about goalkeepers. That save that Ramsdale pulled off cool, from cool. Lucas Mora, that was world class. And Ryan made a point where he says Fred gives up, gives away the ball and just laughs. Well, after Ramsdale made that save and Tommy has to clear the ball, Ramsdale look at party and you could have read him lips when he said, "Clear the effing ball! <laughs> right? Don't play around with it. Clear yeah. the effing ball." I love to see that. I, th- I think yeah, what, I, I think love that. What one, especially one of the standout players in today's match was Granite Shaka. I'm, I mean, Granite Shaka from Bam, excellent. Up. He stepped up and he has a play in, in one of one of the goal as well. Um, many times you sit here and give him stick, but um, today that was a a, a top performance by him. No, and another one that went unnoticed, Odegaard. Yes. Brilliant. Odegaard was fantastic. Fantastic. Run the middle. Mr. I lose my work today because I watch the Arsenal game on the choir. 
<laughs> it worth it too. No, to tomorrow, yeah, go on, Snipe. Here we are. Uh, uh, one thing I will say that the entire watching this Arsenal this morning, guys, it remind me of the old Arsenal. And not only remind me of the old Arsenal, but it gives me a taste of what to look forward to for the future yeah. Arsenal. And trust me, sure, say, sure. as I said, Brian, rightfully, I like people that talk the nonsense from early on. As it says, nonsense. Let's just watch the ah. game and play out. Yeah, man. Now, I see some commentators say some things, you know, and they might don't play the victory, but we're going to leave that for another time, you know, because I'm not mm. going to jump on them right now. Because there's a, always an agenda against Arsenal. So, I'm going to leave that for next time. Now, what do you want think about tomorrow game? Crystal Palace and Brighton Hope Albion in our last game that, you know, I want to feel like a win that one. Well, if you're going to work on what we are seeing now, Brighton has come out with a heavy foot. They really are sure a different side of Brighton that when they race so often. Matter of fact, we can't really recall really seeing them from such a heavy win. I should say win streak, but poor win. Come on, man. That's no Brighton. Them are play every point that we can look at them in. At one, for me, as well as no Brighton, defense wise, let me get anybody around for the money. Most right. people normally lose, but defense wasn't get anybody around for the money. No, with that same defense, and now the attack them are put forward. Come on. Them look like them look like yeah. a mid-table team. Right now, yeah. when we say mid table that here's the, the right, when we see them play, they remind they kind of give me a Leicester City vibes when they win the Premier League. Not saying they're going to win, but it right, gives me that right. vibe. Give me that vibe. So me I look forward to see what them call with next and who them are gonna play or how them are gonna play. No, me totally yeah, I understand. You get that. So what you think, Jeremy, and what you feel like I go in? Yeah, another derby tomorrow you know, between um Crystal Palace and Brighton. Uh, be, 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 before this week we, we could all agree that Brighton was flying under the radar doing their business, but with the result of this weekend, um, all the attention um, is on them right now. If they win tomorrow, they will be on top of the table. I hope that is not a additional um, pressure on them, but I am confident they will get the win against Palace tomorrow. I don't think Palace, Palace will make it easy on them, but Brighton look a, look a good team uh, away and also especially at home. Well, you see, that this is why the English Premier League is one of the most exciting leagues in the world. And this is why we love football. Who would have guessed it that Manchester United would lose, Chelsea would lose, um, Liverpool would draw, and then in the same breath, Arsenal that two weeks ago were in last position would now be sitting above Tottenham. We have to love it. Yeah, and, th- and Tottenham won their first um, three match, right? First three, yeah. Tottenham won their first three. Now we're sitting above Tottenham. That's why we have to love football. Now, talking about football, there's a, a little idea floating around with FIFA. They want to make the World Cup every two years instead of four. I don't know how I feel about that. Kind of, and I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence with that, right? But I'm going to love to hear the man's opinion on that. Yeah, I can understand. Um, we, we, we said you're on the fence uh, uh, on this one. Maybe it's because it's emotion, right? Because we are accustomed to World Cup keeping every four years. So that could be a factor in it as well. Um, but I do understand the, the idea behind keeping it every two years. Financially, it will help um, develop football. I get that point. But I also get the other point that FIFA are just hungry, grabbing bastards that will do anything to continue getting money. <laughs> yeah, true. Ryan, you, you say I have something to say. Come on, I want to hear your input on this one. About the money for FIFA, 
every two years, like what's the sense? The, the thing about it, what that made it special was the fact that it being every four years, it made a spectacle. You understand what I mean? Yeah. So you know, so four years time, a totally new team is going to emerge and become something. You, you, you know what I mean? You want yeah. to see in four years time how a team either develops or, or yeah, transition. But, yeah, um, but like I was saying, uh, because we are accustomed to seeing it every four years. Um, if, we, if we are going into the theory that, hey, if we keep this every two years, I will get this kind of money, and then we, we, we reimburse it back to the countries, we will see football possible developing more. But like I said, on the other hand, on the other hand I just believe that it's all about money for FIFA. Yeah, I kind of agree with you, yes? Because the thing is, Brian... But well, like we we'll say, without the every four year, it doesn't feel as special, you know. That excitement of the World Cup being every four year may be lost. Yeah. But what's what surprised me, you know, is that apparently, according to um the conversation newspaper from Portsmouth University, this idea was developed by Arsene Wenger, you know, the professor, because. He thinks it is the right way forward for football. And at the same time, while he thinks that, UEFA said they won't take part in it, right? So without the European nations in a World Cup, then that competition wouldn't make any sense. So totally, totally agree. agree. I mean, Arsene always mean football um, would. Well, yeah. Yeah, um, if the European nation are won't take part, because I mean this will affect um euros as well, because euros is what every every two year. Every, every four, four as every, well. Every, every four. four. Every four. Yeah, as every well, four. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah. So I guess this, I guess this will be a, a a lot of football along with with club football and and, and stuff like that. Yeah, you see, the thing is, if the World Cup changes to every four years, then two. Then every two, sorry. Then automatically the Euros would also have to change. Right? So it's a thing where, yes, you know, most of FIFA's money is from the revenue, from broadcasting fees, licensing rights, ticket sale, etc. It it would be too much wrangle dangle and changing it may be stifling for the public for no say all right every two year a world cup this no feel special again yeah yeah but, like like i said going back going back to my earlier comment we, we i have we have never seen this we are accustomed to the four year i mean we won't know until it happens yeah true but snipe do you think you agree with this um, outside of the money, um, purpose, well, we know FIFA and the money already. I, I don't have a problem with it. Honestly, I don't have a problem with it being every two years. Because, for one, I've always been like four year kind of like four year long skill. You see me? And sometimes I look for some player wearing different timeline and then come up in the game and then have a good World Cup. Within the next four years, the age, and then by them time they kinda like if you see the better tired of it, the player. So Muno Minor every two years. When I say four, I, basically I'm neutral. When I say if it's a four, no problem. If I two, I'll work with it. The only problem is just probably the transition way or it may affect players and all of them things. Because they already are complaining about so much game them of a player. So every two years, of course, you know, more game that. But and, you know. I agree with you, Seth Knight, because that's one of the reasons why I'm on the fence with this. You know, every two years means that uh, you don't get to see the best player there more frequently. Because, say, I'm on like Cristiano Ronaldo. I go go, I'm second World Cup. No, he's not going to retire. A star. No, no, well, I don't. Just say him start out, and I'm going to go, I'm second World Cup, and him pick up an injury. By the time I'm going to third World Cup, he may be too old. Right? 
So mm-hmm. him get maybe one or two World Cup where if for every two years, them have a chance to out them more and I play more. Uh, and so, that, yeah. And that too. And for me, that would be one of the benefits I see for me to get more playing yeah. time and that not the long span there in between. Yeah, man. So, overall, me, as a football fan, from what Ryan is saying, I understand how the four year can make it special, but for me, even for every two year, the love of football and just to see a nation best come together and play, for me, that will always be special. World Cup would always be special, whether two or four years. No, Ryan, guys, it's a year topic. You think if it go about where the World Cup is every two years, it would have stifle a lot of young players? Because you have the establishment them are continuously clear. Maybe the opposite, you know, in terms of all right, you're always gonna have player or a young player who emerges but falls off. So it will give a lot the opportunity in that moment to make that step or that jump. Because if you're looking at a player for in a four years time to develop, some players are we just say flashing at the point. So in right. that two years, he, he may rise, rise up, and then you know, see him again. So at least he got, got that opportunity to show what he could have done on the biggest stage. Then we had four years where things just now pan out or some injury or you know what I mean? So more opportunity. Well, I why we feel like yeah, throw shade off of Rodriguez. So I'm as Rodriguez. I feel like a Rodriguez yeah, throw shade off then. At least he got to shine and got a big move. And he, he understand true. what I mean? True, so, true. Four years later, who was that? We don't know. He's now in, in <laughs> Qatar. <laughs> Apparently, that's always been his dream club. So let's see. Like, like, like Oscar. Like Oscar, yeah. Not about, not but, about bring up to him. Move on, let's move on. Nah, man, we have to throw Oscar in this man. Oscar said he's been dreaming about that club, so, you know. But regardless of what happens, Arsene Wenger's idea is basically throwing the cat amongst the pigeon because World Cup is, without a doubt, the greatest show on earth, the greatest spectacle on earth. Amen. Now, talking about greatest... The one them hear the debate that's popped up on social media about Drake versus Michael Jackson. Tell me now, this can't real? What? Yeah, man. Drake versus Michael Jackson, who's greater? Or is Drake now in the category with Michael Jackson? You know what? I I don't understand revisionist history. That we're in a... I'm now where a lot of these young people are throwing around terms like goat and uh, and them are the greatest, them are the best since this, like like re- diminishing diminishing the the the, the what the groundwork, the, yeah, I've achieved. No one has ever and will ever sell that amount of albums and 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 and, and, and that amount of com- accomplishments that Michael Jackson had. If Michael Jackson was in this era. Um, with streaming, yeah, man. Music. May I tell you, the, 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 the numbers would be, would be astronomical. Man, the man would uh, Michael Jackson would honestly reach every corner of the planet because Absolutely. he did it without the streaming. But let me hear what Jeremy and Officer said because that topic, yeah, why it's All right. tricky. All right, it, it, it is. By any stretch of the imagination, Michael Jackson is the is the, the biggest one, is the biggest entertainer, entertainer of our time. The man pretty much did not lead by himself. But by himself. I can understand the argument, right? Because you have to give credit where credit um, is due. For the last yeah. 10 years, or you could say the last decade, Drake have been the man. Um, number one songs, streaming numbers are crazy. Um, some of the, the, the top best um, collabs 
album pretty much sell off. You name it, he, um, he's doing it. But like what Ryan said with, with this generation, of course they are of course they are gravi gravitating um towards him. This gra um this generation will not necessarily gravitate to a Michael uh Jackson or a Celine Dion or a air supply and, and those um kind of people. But what I can say is that they should appreciate the, the mere fact that Drake is here and giving good good music rather than putting that pressure on him. Yeah, I, I agree, but this is some this is some interesting stats. Cause um BBC World News says Drake has nine number one songs on the Billboard um 100, right? Yeah. He also has the most hot 100 charts entries ever, 237. Yeah. yeah. The most entries on the hot rap songs chart with 15. Yeah. Right? And this is where the streaming comes in now because Yahoo News says Drake's certified lover boy has nine songs that reach Billboard 100, yeah. which is the most ever. And I think this is why the debate came about because it broke um, Michael Jackson and Janet Jackson's previous record of seven. So I think this is what people saw and start coming. I, I mean, hearing. Ooh. no, I'm not hearing a German. Yeah, um, sorry about that. I mean, records are always going to be broken, right? That's why right. they are there. I mean, Michael Jackson typically changed the landscape as it relates to entertainment on a whole. This man come on stage and, and, and grab his crutch and 100 screaming ladies faint in a, in a concert maybe. and maybe the next 100 <laughs> get pregnant. <laughs> well, we, we have say Michael Jackson can't breed nobody. Well, I'm not a medical doctor, so I won't go on that. Regardless of that, we have yet only a few entertainers have come around and, and do stuff like that. Are you talking maybe Elvis, Elvis Presley and, and, and those kind of people? So, so like I said, record will always be broken. Probably the next 10 years, our next yeah. entertainer will come around and shatter great records. So, 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 so Brian. Yeah. Greetings. Well, oh, greetings. The man Chavi himself is here. So, um, yes. Jake of nine number one. It's Michael Jackson of 13. Yeah. Um, yeah. Drake of what? About 40 top 10. It's that's great. Michael Jackson of about 30. Michael Jackson of 13 Grammy. Michael Jackson of a lifetime achievement Grammy Award. 20 yeah. in his world record. Oh, and something where I think Drake will never have. Oh. Songwriter. The greatest true, song. True. <laughs> true, true. And that, that right there is the most important fact. I agree. Because not many people know this, but Drake's first album you know, was basically was written by The Weeknd. See it there? Eh? Yeah. Drake's first album no. was basically uh, ghost written by the weekend. So I agree with you, Travi. Songwriter quality. So Michael Jackson is just the overall package to me, Amma. But they couldn't say it any better there. Yeah, but listen to this piece of information, eh? right? Because more I know it without social media, Drake could have achieved this. Right? His new album, Certified Lover Boy had 744 million streams in the first week, shattering every record. 744 million streams in a week. Like I said, in the last decade, Jake have been, uh, is the man. We are in the era of streaming. Jake appeals yeah. to, this, to this generation. To, to this generation. Like, like I said in episode one of the podcast, when I listen to Nelly album, I rate it better than Drake one. But like what Chavi said, Nelly's not speaking to this generation. 
so once and, so once and, Drake and, drops something, this generation has just eat it up totally. I I believe they go too far with with um Michael Jackson is not around, you know, and if but he was why? around, maybe maybe with the streaming thing now, he would have surpassed everybody. And maybe if 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 we can't go judge Drake back then we don't stream because yeah. who knows? We don't know. Probably would have sell records. Probably he wouldn't. So I believe they go too far. Go to Michael Jackson. No, they, they come on. Look how much other artists. Then find somebody else and and, and compare yeah. Drake. A whole heap of artists they now last take it. So, so yeah, they, you cannot. Chavi, we you say you're right. You cannot compare the present to the past. You have to talk in a timeline to somebody who in the same era. Yeah, right? Exactly. No, saying I, that. That is good. No, let me add a two cents to that topic, yeah. Yeah. For me personally, I really encourage this topic. Let me even bring it up and I pick no mind. Because that last point, you know, just a while ago, the different timeline and what played the major difference technology. Streaming, social media, big difference. Exactly. Yeah. And that said, when when we when we first hear this talk, when we start surf the social media and everything, I found out where this conversation coming from. And when we check it out and I read one report, keep in mind that fifty-eight percent of Twitter is the younger generation, twenty-eight and under. Those are the ones who are posting this and continue prolonging, retweeting, as they call it. We probably don't even know Michael Jackson's song. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh. to me, it's really no conversation to be had anybody who understands the two generations because the younger generation will speak from one side and have yeah. Drake with them know. And as we said, yeah. with technology and streaming and all of these things, I keep in one thing. When I look at the them, I say, Drake have a 15 songs from Billboard one time. But then when Michael Jackson do the same thing, it takes a help. One, you have to get through the time and all these things. True, true. It yeah, takes yeah, yeah. money, it takes time versus now you can use your iPhone and your phone alone is a studio. And you can record three, four, five, six, seven songs. And check out how often you drop a song. There used yeah, to be a pattern a, you have a point. Where, like you have every year or every other year an artist drop an album. Nowadays, uh, artists are drop a song or album when they feel like if I want an album, I want a mixtape, I want to mix something. It's getting me, I say. So the... And nowadays, everything comes like an album to get to these artists. You put together something as an album. Exactly. Everything. Yeah. Exactly. Um, you see my, la you see my la last point on this topic. Like I said, I, I understand the whole comparison thing. And some people say it should even come up. But in reality, Everything can come true, no matter how great you are. You know what is appealing with, with, with Drake? He's, he's like a hybrid. He, he, ha he has this R&B thing and also him have this hip-hop thing. And yeah, yeah. Travis said something earlier on that if he was in that area, you know, possible that, he, that Drake in that era could very well possible have bigger numbers than the Drake in this era. Because like I said, this is a hybrid. Not many rapper. Yes, it dwell in the R and B, R and B side of thing, and and that that is the one thing that that stand out with him. No, but I disagree to, that but to the disagree thing. with what Pinto said a while ago, in the yeah. in the sense that one, you have to keep in mind that Drake have a style of music him though. This is what you don't call a modern style of music. So deep in my head, we can't make that comparison beside me. I compare it to them when Jake Drake style of music versus Michael Jackson style of music. We couldn't make them cover so. So no. if said there's a possibility that Drake could not have. No, I'm not. I'm not comparing both music. You know, I'm just saying the yeah. the, the magnitude of, of of what Drake have accomplished in the last ten years can't be ignored. For me, no, no, no. There's no way you can ignore that. There's no way. To, but as I said to me. For me, in every category, they're just on two different timelines. Of different course, they're, 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 they're really every comparing. category. I think I simply put it like this. You have Messi and Ronaldo, then you have everybody else. You have Michael Jackson, then everybody else. Same. Agreed. There we go. There we go. And All right. 
But the, the thing is, though, the, the most important thing with comparisons with the timeline and different eras, it all falls back to speculation. Yeah. No, if you compare two people in a, the same era, you will get a more accurate measurement, like Cat Williams versus Kevin Hart. Who want to think about that? Who want to feel who that with a two great comedian were in a same era? For me, Cat Williams. 100% agree with you. I could have said more. Cat who Williams. Well, oh, let, let, me, let me drop my two cents on why I said Cat Williams. I don't want to come off bias. Um, I saw that, 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 that comment that it made about the, the verses as it relates to comedian. And Cat Williams... Um, is far more funnier than, than Kevin Hart. And I understand Cat Williams' argument that, you know, the, with the amount of um, special that he did, he was on top of the, the comedy world, not, not, not really um, in the movie category with the big blockbuster, but at one point, Cat Williams was the man. But with all that said, I honestly believe he said this just to try and revive what's left of his career. And um, I, I agree with you. Go on, go on, Ryan. I feel you, yes. The thing is now, Cat Williams is way funnier than Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart is just smarter business-wise, mm-hmm. I believe. Cat Williams, um, I believe he allowed his pride to get the best of him to not allow himself to really achieve what he should have. So right now, what we are seeing is that Cat Williams that's actually just bitter because he sees a man who is in the spot that he should have been in, which is sad because Kevin Hart's shtick, as they like to call it, is the same thing. So every move that you watch with him, you know what you're going to get from him. You understand? Cat Williams is an actor where no matter the, he can actually play diverse roles. So he, his comedy is broad. You understand? His talent is broader. You get what I'm, what I'm no. saying? Because no, Ryan, his, you think... Well, up. You think you think a bit I'm bitter or I'm pride? Or do you think it's what he said in one of his special where he really revealed a lot of things of what happens in Hollywood behind closed doors that messed him up? Because you have to remember, I know, you see, we said FIFA is a beast. Hollywood is also a beast. Ah, right? um, Brian, here's, here's my thing, right? Here's my thing. Why is it that is when you're up there and for some reason you feel uncomfortable or whatever, then you start to talk about what, go be, what goes behind closed door in Hollywood? You were accepting wow. it. Yes, yeah. in Germany. Yeah. You were accepting it. You were there accepting it. What all of a sudden you, you grew a, con- a, a, a conscience? It could no. be that in a German, it could exactly be that because mm. on the way up to the top, a man is willing no. to do anything Brent, Brent, because he's not on the bottom. Maybe yeah. not the conscience, you know, but it's like, all right, remember, you know, remember, you know, um, yes, maybe him never, maybe him see it to happen and he never want it, but I'm work, he want food on him table. He want to make it. So probably he never 100% with it. So if he got to talk out why it um, which part he would have done now. Yeah, but um, let's be fair, he also caused more that damage to his career as well. I mean, yes. there's an incident where he and he, he went to a fan the, with, a, with one of his fans. There was an incident <laughs> with him <laughs> and a Walmart um, situation. Cat Williams was pretty much all over the place. I see where he, he went extremely hard and what's her name? Tiffany Adish. I mean, I agree she's yeah. not the, the funniest person, but, but she's grinding and the man totally just always tried to tear her down. Um, and, and Kevin Hart as well. I mean, Maria Cat Williams, you know, Maria him as a comedian, one of the funniest. But um, at some point, he had to draw the line because the line and, and just talk the truth. I mean, Sometimes go up too much. No, maybe maybe at the lifestyle where the man lives make him so funny. But snipe, let me hear what you have to say. Um, as Quinta said, I can find myself being biased towards Cat Williams. 
But I'll go as far as say, me no want play with that. Tottenham Williams does have a. I think Ray mentioned him have a big ego. He is arrogant. Yeah. yeah. And coming from that statement that you not said earlier, say yo, him get a conscience make him a tackle. I remember him doing an interview, and based on who him attack. I don't think his conscience make him talk out. He's reaching reach that point where he feel him so big. He feel him bigger than Hollywood make him talk. It wasn't a conscious thing. He okay. just feel like, yeah, with the on top of the world now, nobody can. Be untouchable. Him. Yeah. And he make him talk. So I, yeah. I so plain to all that you were painting, I say, him arrogant, him ego, and all of that. I fight with the fans, Walmart, in just a do, not just. Him do everything him feel like and nobody can give him no chance and at the end of the day that's what break him down and even that same thing is why him so hot against Kevin Hart because yeah we agree as Ryan said Kevin Hart is more of a businessman and yeah me, me, I don't have a problem I enjoy him joke them completely enjoy him joke them but I do see that to me he's not as cynical in that area as Cat Williams right me no now, the last point, the more more I make for the Cat Williams, Kevin, or thing, because when I really love to see the battle go down and the show you go down, I agree when Cat Williams said it would be cheating for him because Cat Williams has eight special and Kevin Hart only have three. The only thing Kevin Hart did, like Ryan said, was be smarter business wise because his special laugh at my pain while not anywhere as funny as any one of Cat Williams' specials sold 15 million tickets. Right? So, Brian, impressive. Yeah. It as well. Yeah. Cat Williams are in some C, 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 D, um standard movies where Kevin Hart is in some blockbusters making some blockbuster yes, movies. It's exactly. a DVD release. <laughs> no. The, the movies. May, may I go take that out of it? Because the movie, it could be who you know and all your lines are scripted for you. That, I know, none of them creative work, none of them creative genius. Did. But, like I said, I'm dying to see this go down because based on the consensus of the group, we all say Cat Williams funny. I and, don't think I don't think it will happen. Yeah, I, I don't think it will skip. happen. What? You know, said a brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what Chavi said? Him choose Kevin Hart. <laughs> Just like him yeah, choose but, Villa. What's up? I didn't see Villa kill some sign. Well, all right, moving on. The man oh, named Airbo. <laughs> the man named Airbo, the South African pilot, will fly for 20 years without a license or a fake license, I should say. Ah, like I say, life, you know. Maybe I owe you more because this man must be a genius to pull off something like that. No. One more ask, right? We, we just want to ask him a question real quick. Right? If you fly for 20 years, right? That means you fly countless flights. Should it be a thing of skill and know how versus certified? Because obviously, you have the skill and know how. Is the certification no that important? Yeah. Uh, you don't see the man them quick thoughts, but all right. Based on what so me that read on the story, he wasn't a he wasn't a command flight. So he's not in charge of actual flying the plane. He was um the managing or uh, monitoring pilot. You know the third pilot now still on to the side. That what you yeah. So um, uh, you know the latter part, he actually got to fly um a plane, and in that. One instance, him get a chance to fly the plane, he makes some unusual, I guess it's a turn during, in, the, in the air, and that's what they end up uh, reviewing and they suddenly figure out that him have a fake license. So, oh, with okay. That said, so, you yes. never have the skill and the know how then? Um, all right. Based on one, what one of the, what you call them, I don't know, where, do the review and everything, he was saying that in order to be a pilot, you have to pass certain tests, which we want to put you in the cockpit. Right. So by that default, right. he's saying he, sh- he would know the necessary things to do. Ex- is it if, so if, the, if the main pilot and the co-pilot incapacitated or whatever, he should be able to take over from them. But at the right. end of the day, he did not have a license to do that 
per se. And when I read that, I, I think the title of the news is kind of misleading. When we read this, what, what happened is that how it works is every year you have to do a test as a pilot, every year you have to renew it. So how it goes is that him go doing test and then he has to take the results to the lightning, whatever. And in doing that, he changed the papers and all of them things. He, he, re, he changed up things. And it also had a link within the license place where you pass it through because you're the next person you're investigating. And because of that, them are, every license with a person deal with, they might check all of them. The investigation now. Yeah. Okay. You, you know what I all said? Right. You know what I said to all of this? Regardless, it him no off turn on the engine of the plane reach that far, he must have some level of skill to keep hiding and moving through the crack. So you see, Jeremy, right now, him coming like a front having Neil Jr. Pretty much. Yeah, because Frank, once you have that level of skill to do certain things, I think instead of the airline now suing him for millions, why not help him to get certified? That's a good point. That, 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 that I was about to say that too. The suing part, I understand that them feel like, them feel embarrassed again. Them feel hurt. Yeah. But when I think after so much years, I mean, come on. The, and the manager, and, and keep in mind, no, he, he, he is skilled because before he, he became a pilot, he was an uh, engineer. He, he can build a plane. Then give him the parts, he can build a plane. This is what I was reading. And then he got to him pilot life, some ACLP or something to that effect, effect but he had different levels. So he never got to the level of being a commander, as they call it. He was a monitoring pilot. So it's not that him do not know how to follow the procedures, so to speak. It's just that that yes. test we have to do, get the papers, well, and then I'm saying him have somebody on the inside that helped him keep this going on for so much years. So, oh, how much years I say? 40 20. 20. Yeah, 20. And then we have to sue this man. Yeah. Oh, man, I need to sue themselves. <laughs> Good point, Travi, because somebody should not catch happen. this. <laughs> you know Good what? Point. You know what? In 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 the in episode one, I think we were discussing Hollywood and if they're running out of idea. This is a perfect movie that they yes, can <laughs> that they can adapt and bring it Where's to the real screen. life. Yes, man. This is a movie in real the life. All right, let me go on another movie in the making because it coming like Frank Abidnell um, Jr. Sickness I go road. The Gleaner claims that the nutrition products HR manager only had six CXC subjects and therefore not qualified for his role as HR manager. All right. All right. So, want, who want to take on this? Because it, 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 this coming like is an insult to me now because. Clearly, me know the wrong people in my life. How long has he been the HR manager? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 20, I, I think at 2016. 2017. Like 2017. Yeah, 2017. I know at 2021 and then just know that. What my, yeah. my question is, my question, my stupid question is, right? If the person didn't have the qualification, right, that much up to, to be in, the HR and getting the job first, right? Does that make the person a bad HR? Wasn't the person doing their job? And and that goes back to the question that I posed earlier, Jeremy. Know how and skill. How is how important is it versus being certified? Because if um, you know your job, do you then have to have the certification? When a lot of people with the certification don't know the job. So you have, to have, you have to have certain certification to run the country because <laughs> I see where this is going. All right. But a lot of people with the certification now run the country good. Anyway, we're not talking about that. But exactly the real thing saying is, so. And the reality is I'm thinking that I, I think the, all this 
come up still is not so much that the person have six GCE. GCE. Yeah. GCE. The problem is the peer. Because based on what the OER are saying, based on the auditors are saying that of all the top management position, all of the top management position, and then specify how much. But you know, my HR directors and all these people, only two of the positions they were paying, being paid when I'm supposed to be paid. Everybody else I get above when I'm supposed to get paid. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much said them, I focus on to add them underqualified. It is part of it, but that's how it became a thing. When they say, well, on. one, it might get but, overpaid by like 1.8 million or something like so. And, on the and years, you see now, Snipes, this brings this bring me to an important question. Um, more and more, you know. The link thing and the connection thing in Jamaica. Nepotism right? is a hell of a thing. It's a hell of a thing. Because first of all, this one was not qualified for the job. And then second of all, he's now being paid more than he should have been paid. So, like I said, Jeremy, we know the wrong people in our life. I mean, yeah, enough of the listeners, they must feel the same way. Yeah, man, I link around this thing, you know. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, Travis. Is the man actually doing his work? That's because the question I asked. It might, be, it might be working. You have a lot of persons where I get paid. <sighs> I'm over when I do them work, I have some person who really do the work, and then I get way, not... way, way, way below. Chabby, you, see, you see, sometimes if you look so, on it, you see just like a situation with the, with the pilot, brother. I mean, suppose say I got a doctor for many years, no one in my treat all of your problem. And then you find out later saying that you have a license, everything we go to you look on YouTube and fix you. Automatically, now the head start to hurt you, you know, if you have a problem with yourself, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, man, that's true. That's true. The one there, by right may, medication may, and gear. May I agree, Pinter, say, yo, you say, once you learn that you have been bringing an art of the trigger and you start overthinking. <laughs> exactly. But as Travis asked the question, is he doing a good job? Because for me, personally, for me, if somebody can do the work, make them work. Agree. Make them work. Agree. Yeah, man, I agree. But you know what, you, you know what, Snipe, when this, when, when this episode here, you know, man, you get a whole different flap to that in a car. Remember, some yeah. people just always talk about, you have to have the papers, the papers, the papers. And, and Pinto, in our culture that we are currently in, we have seen where you have people have a certificate and I still demand them with, and I have them certificate, I teach them how to do the work. That's true. And exactly. Other mm -hmm. different branches and across the world. So, <laughs> And even uh, Ministry of Education, about a couple of years ago, when the U.S. students and uh, U.S. students were um, protesting, mm. and they were saying that most students that left U and U Tech, even though they have a degree, when they're going on the job, they can't apply what they learn. True, true. So See your I'm point. That, so I'm saying that if a man can have the experience, for me, I would rather take someone who's experienced, I'm a minimum thing, or somebody who's certified. Second, that. Mm -hmm. that, is, that, that is true. No, no. actual work, just know say you have a certificate. I mean, no, some of us women know say a fact that this thing can do, never deal with you. That's just my, yeah. my thought. And don't get yeah. me wrong, you know, me not put them nobody against it because people work hard for them certificate. Agree. But agree. what I prefer if you have that experience behind your certificate. I, I guess that. I guess you're right because when you when I look jobs, most of the jobs say. With three year experience with four exactly. year and you just left school where you get it from. So I guess everybody prefer the first with the experience. YouTube. But in, in, in wrapping up, right? I'm gonna know if Ryan and the man them did say what the gleaner talk about this. Um I think she was nine year old, nine year old Jamaican girl who created an energy pen in her free time. Right, you know we have to close and big up for Jamaica and them. We click about to tell our creative and in you know, we ingenious man. Yes, Kalia Matthews from Primbacal Primary School. I mean with oh, all yeah. with all going on in Jamaica right now, with with the negative vibes and negative energy and COVID. 
we have some we have some positive coming out of it. I mean, there's a lot. I want to I wanna aim of this podcast is to definitely highlight at least one um, every every week. Um, this talented um, um, young girl right here did something in her spare time. We at the podcast here are, are proud of you and just wanted to let you know just continue. Do your best and continue um, doing great things. Yeah, Jamaica proud, man. So, in wrapping up, the man them have nothing to say, nothing to touch upon, women not touch upon. Ryan. Yeah, Ryan is not there. Carl and Carl not accepted. So, you know what? It that's another episode of people. Until next time, you know, I see you travel up on your gravel. I see you in your horse to the most. And of course, you know, if you want to know, Mr. Andrew Snipe, you're spilling the points and keeping it real. You know, Mr. Andrew is here. I just give that thanks and man them. Good talk. Good talk as usual. Yeah, man. Uh, at, at GRP. Uh, another great episode of the podcast. Jamaica, please be your brother keeper. I mean, we're going through a difficult time. Don't be afraid to call up on a family member or a friend and just ask what go on. If you're interested, I want to get a spot on this podcast. You can just reach out to us at last of the real podcast at gmail.com if you need a feature or anything like that. And you can also find me on Twitter at Jeremy and Pinto One. Yeah, man, big up, big up everyone, you know. Yeah, man, when you get what a great one, you know. Everybody just keep safe and check out the next episode. Big up. All right, people, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. Sure, we're glad you can make it still, because every time you make it, you fire some shot. And we like it shot. So, you know, I'm keep doing this. All right. Till them time, the people.